Well, good evening and Eid Mubarak. My name is Farah Pandath, and I am the special representative to Muslim communities here at the Department of State. It's my pleasure to welcome you this evening. For more than 15 years, the Department of State has been proud to host celebrations to commemorate the holy month of Ramadan. Celebrating our country's diversity and understanding that it makes us stronger is a tenant we hold dear. Whether it is a Seder dinner or an Easter egg roll, a Diwali or an Eid celebration, our traditions demonstrate the diversity and the equality of all Americans. Freedom of religion is a central component of our founding principles. In 2011, as we celebrate Eid together this evening, we have a chance to look at our history in new ways. There are 20 panels displayed around this room, and they chronicle American presidents spanning four centuries, and their important acknowledgments of re the religion of Islam in our country and around the world. It is the first time these accounts have been compiled in this way. I have personally learned a lot by reading about these chapters in American history and their significance in the broader frame of today's world. I want to thank the historian, Precious Muhammad, for her passion, her dedication, and the many hours spent to pull together this unique timeline. I would also like to thank the many Americans who have asked us for information about the way in which our nation, through its presidents and our diplomacy, have interfaced with Muslims. We look at the past and we look at the present, and we see how Muslims have contributed to the landscape of America. In that vein, tonight we are proud to acknowledge the important contributions American Muslims have made to athletic competition and our nation. The men and women with us tonight represent all forms of competition, from the NFL to collegiate competition to training for the Olympics. As you all know, one of America's most revered citizens and a worldwide hero is none other than Muhammad Ali, a man who served his country in the boxing ring and beyond. In 1980, President Carter made him the first American Muslim presidential appointee. President Clinton awarded him the Presidential Citizens Medal, which recognizes those who have performed exemplary deeds or services for their country. And in 2005, President Bush bestowed the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian award in the United States. Though he can't be with us tonight, I spoke with his wife, Lonnie, who expressed her joy that not only Secretary Clinton was celebrating Eid in this way, but that we were highlighting athletics. His legacy demonstrates the values we see in athletic competition, willpower, teamwork, achievement. They bridge divides and embody the spirit of America. Just like Muhammad Ali, many in this room will put their mark on American history as well in ways we cannot yet conceive. As special representative to Muslim communities, Secretary Clinton has asked me to engage with Muslims around the world on a people-to-people -people level. And she's asked me to advance President Obama's vision of building relationships based on mutual interest and mutual respect. For the past two years, I've traveled around the world meeting with citizens at the grassroots level. I'm especially focused on youth. Everywhere I go, I find young athletes that are contributing to the strength and the vibrancy of their communities. Last April, in Auburn, Australia, I met with Almosi Muhammad, an Australian Somali amateur kickbox kickboxer. In Jordan, I met with physical education teachers who are teaching youth life skills through athletic competition. And in Nouakchott, Mauritania, I got to know Matung Mabamba, who started a youth tennis NGO so students had something to do after school. Whether overseas or on American soil, sports bring people together. I think that we can see from the athletes we honor here tonight that no matter what your race, your creed, your background, all Americans have the opportunity to excel in athletic competition and beyond. Now, you may or may not know that Secretary Clinton has a long history with sports. Whether it was in her early years uh, on the softball field 
or celebrating the 25th anniversary of Title IX at the White House when she was First Lady, or just this past June when she launched the State Department's Women's World Cup Initiative to empower women and girls through sports, she has demonstrated that athletics have important effects both on and off the field. Please welcome Secretary Hillary Clinton. Thank you. Well, I, I am a wannabe athlete, and I have absolutely no claim to being anything other than that, but I am delighted that this evening we're going to be honoring some young people who truly are athletes and who are carving uh, their own futures in uh, the history of our country. So good evening, everyone. Eid Mubarak, and thank you, Farah, for your tireless efforts on behalf of uh, the work that uh, brings you not only to this podium, but around the world. It is a delight to see so many ambassadors from uh, countries that uh, I have visited and know well and to see many familiar faces here again, particularly some of the youth leaders that we honored at our last iftar dinner. The problem with Ramadan in August is it was impossible. <laughs> and so we thought, well, it's September, but we're going forward. And so I thank you for uh, your understanding and your being here uh, once again. Now, I'm told that there are two members of Congress with us, uh, Representatives Keith Ellison and Sheila Jackson Lee, and I send a special word of welcome to them. Uh, as Farah said, you can see through the uh, lobby and the diplomatic reception rooms uh, some of our history of presidents affirming America's respect for Muslims and Islam dating back to Washington, Adams, and Jefferson. And we celebrate that history. And particularly today, we wanted to celebrate sports and athletic competition. Whether it be the Olympics or the World Cup, uh, the human drive to run faster and climb higher is universal and universally celebrated. And it's also a way by which talent rises to the top, ability is what matters, and people are treated equally. And that's part of the reason the State Department sponsors sports exchange programs and sends sports ambassadors around the world. And for all the athletes joining us this evening, uh, you may never have thought of yourself exactly as a role model, uh, but you are. And you are not only to the students that some of you visited uh, earlier today, but to so many beyond and all Americans take pride in your achievements. Now we have some household names as well as some who will be household names. Uh, world champion boxer Amir Khan flew all the way from London to be part of this celebration. Where is Mr. Khan, right? Thank you so much for coming. We also have a number of women athletes who are here. Uh, when Ibdachaj Haj Mohammed fences in her hijab when she trains 30 hours each week without missing a prayer, she's thinking about winning. Um, and she's thinking about the London Olympics next year. Where is Miss Mohammed? Where is she? Right there. But I think it's fair to say that, uh, as her mother has said, uh, many people feel pride and recognize that she is representing more than just herself uh, in her endeavors. Now, not everybody will go to the Olympics, uh, but even weekend warriors can uh, get some satisfaction out of this. And I hope many of you were able to watch the new documentary we screened earlier. Uh, and we're joined by the coach and four members of the Fordston, Fordson Tractors from Dearborn, Michigan, as well as the filmmakers. Where are all of them? The, that was such a great documentary and a great story. And I hope everybody gets a chance to meet our athletes uh, here tonight. But that film highlighted the exceptional circumstances 
that the team faced, uh, that they wanted to train hard and stay healthy while keeping the requirements of Ramadan. And so like every other high school team, they geared up for football practice in August this year with two-a-day practices, except they took the field at 11 p.m. and finished around 4. And that takes special dedication, special dedication to both your sport and your faith. But what stood out to me is how familiar the team and the players ultimately are. Uh, the image of the pregame huddle and prayer could have been filmed at any high school in America. Shoulder pads and helmets crowded the locker room, and big game nerves were somewhat evident on your faces, I have to confess. But despite the extra burdens they carried, at the end of it, it was Friday night football for a team of champions. Now, we can't pretend that there have not been difficulties and division. In fact, the Fordson documentary tells the story of the religious tensions in Dearborn, Michigan. But the power of America has always been anchored in our ability to come together and move forward as one nation. This weekend, we will mark the 10th anniversary of September 11th. And we all lost something that day. In the ashes and the aftermath, we knew that we had lost Christians, Muslims, Jews, Hindus, Buddhists, men, women, young, old. And a decade later, that unity that we felt uh, must continue to inspire and guide us. I'm very proud that in our country, despite the challenges, we do honor the freedom of religion. Too many countries in the world today do not, or they make it difficult and even dangerous for people to try to exercise their religion. So as difficult as it may be, the fact that we get up every day and keep trying is a real tribute to all of us. So at this time of celebration and reflection, and as we mark the end of Ramadan and the beginning of a new year of renewal and possibility, I hope we can recommit ourselves to the common cause of spreading peace, prosperity, understanding to all the people of the earth. Now, I wanted to introduce two of our athletes so that you could hear from them directly. You know, Ephraim Salam has played in the NFL for over a decade. But some of you may know him best for his memorable Super Bowl commercial last year. <laughs> and Kulsum Abdullah is a weightlifter, forging the way for Muslim women athletes to maintain their freedom of expression and still compete at the highest level. Please join me in welcoming first Ephraim and then Kulsum. Ephraim. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, uh, Madam Secretary. Uh, <laughs> I was going to bend down. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Secretary and the State Department and uh, all of you honored and esteemed guests and all of the athletes I had a chance to uh, hobnob with back uh, while we were waiting to come out. I also want to say uh, thank you to my beautiful mother who's made the trip with me, Dr. Salam, Malika Salam. Thank you, Mom. Like uh, Madam Secretary said, I've played 13 years in the NFL. Uh, all of those I've fasted uh, through Ramadan. It's been a, a lot of Ramadans. I've been fasting since I was six years old. Uh, I made the choice that I wanted to, to do it. And, and what that taught me was discipline. It taught me uh, that I have the ability to accomplish anything. I don't know how hard Ramadan has been for you guys, but when I tell you, <laughs> Going through training camp while you're fasting and workouts and even playing games while you're fasting, it, it is tough, but it's doable. And that's what I think the message is. No matter how hard things seem, they're doable. If you have the belief in yourself, faith in God, you can do all things. The ability to acquire knowledge and the courage to persevere through everything, anything is accomplished. And ath athletics has, has taught me that it didn't matter if my teammates were Christian, Jewish, uh, Muslim. It, it didn't matter. We're all headed to one goal, and that was to win. And I think if we adopt that as a nation and be on the same team, it wouldn't matter what your neighbor was or the person you were competing against. It doesn't matter as long as our goal 
is to live in peace. And I think that's what athletics has, has taught me. Thank you guys so much. Assalamu alaikum and peace be upon you and Eid Mubarak. I would like to thank Secretary Clinton and the State Department for inviting me this evening. Uh, speaking to an inspiring group is humbling and awe-inspiring, and I'm honored to be the catalyst who brought the issue of underrepresented women in sports to the forefront. I'm here today because I wanted to lift, to become stronger physically and mentally. It took time for me to have the confidence to compete. But once I started, I had higher goals in my training. My heaviest and best known training lift to date is my deadlift at 111 kilograms, which is 244 pounds. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, so. <laughs> Thank you. So the more I trained, the more weight I could fearlessly lift and throw over my head. And I continued to do so till I hit a personal roadblock of sporting costume and following faith and I did not compete at a qualifying national competition. So I explored options of wearing full clothing and not having a competitive advantage over other competitors. Lawyers and coaches advised the Ted Stevens Act provides for reasonable religious accommodations, but the path remained unclear as this was new territory and had never been requested. Through the overwhelming tide of support from press and the public, who came to know my story via CARE, my appeal was brought to the International Weightlifting Federation. I was astonished and grateful in how the media helped spread my story around the world. The appeal was monumental as it affects 25% of the world's population or 1.6 billion Muslims worldwide. If you learn one thing from my presence here today, I want you to understand in the power of people to bring about change. Believe in yourself, the power of the individual. Any goal takes hard work. Regardless of the result, you always learn from the journey. Some of my personal journeys have been completing my PhD dissertation in electrical and computer engineering, working towards a Taekwondo black belt, and weightlifting, challenging journeys not stereotypically expected of me. So culture and society defines my choices as a woman, and more so as a Muslim woman, as not fitting a stereotype. But religiously, women have the capacity and are meant to be strong and should seek learning and education. Islamic has, history has examples of such women. Unfortunately, women of all cultures and societies are defined and valued most, more so for their appearance than their intellect and accomplishments. One of the advantage of sports, and on the same token education, is that it builds confidence. I hope my story can inspire and help women. Boundaries still need to be broken in all parts of the world and sectors of society, but the progress is promising. With my education, I hope to also work and collaborate in humanitarian applied research that drive to educate and research improvements to real world problems propelled me to pursue a PhD. One area of personal interest is human trafficking, which is an area I am happy to see the State Department focus on. My focus is on the technology aspect and how people use the internet and cellular networks to advertise and communicate with clients. Research is needed to find effective ways to track this activity. I hope that representing Pakistan at international competitions will help foster more female involvement in sports. It is not about finishing on the winner's podium, but getting to the starting line. Sports should be an activity that the girl in diapers, the next generation, would be familiar with and consider, not something that she has to pioneer. My father's passion for helping people and making a difference was the driving force in becoming an award-winning surgeon and family doctor. My father emphasized education and hard work, and my mother diligently supported my siblings and me in this incredible quest from the rural villages of northern Pakistan to these American shores. Our narrative is unbelievable, as I would never have guessed where these events would lead us. Just stop and think for a moment that you have standing before you is the daughter of two people from a remote region of Pakistan. This is what makes America great and what makes Pakistan great. You never know what will happen in your life or how you can make a difference, so you have to try with good intentions. One of the things I realized in Ramadan is being thankful for what you have and that by challenging yourself, especially when you're training in sports, you become stronger 
spiritually, mentally, and physically. This year, it came at a time for me that I needed those reminders. And I want to give thanks to God, my family, my parents, sisters, Shabana Farhan, my brothers, Saka bin Nayab, my friends, especially Nadia, Sadia, Ali, teachers, coaches, and all the others I haven't mentioned my name who have supported me in all of my journeys. I wish everyone a very happy Eid. Salaam alaikum and thank you for having me. Well, thank you, Ifram, and thank you very much, Kulsum, for your wonderful words. Very inspiring and very much America. Now, for those of you who wish to pray, there is a prayer room directly through those doors. It's the John Quincy Adam, Adams room. Uh, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of your Eid celebration here. Uh, there's lots of refreshments. Uh, have a good evening and Eid Mubarak. You did a really good job. Thank you very much. So, Yes. You know about that? Of course, I do. <laughs>